You're what? not doing this to me again, are you? We're going to have to, mate. It's a couple of hours until it goes dark. <sighs> what are you going to do this time to stall? Mate, if I roll up the camp in the daytime, people will just think I'm weird. Oh, you'll lose followers for sure. Yeah, so we're just going to wait here. All right, I might pull a deck chair out. Why don't you just hop in your rooftop? Yeah, why not? It's quick enough. Big night ahead of us. Big night. Big drive. Hours. Lucky I charged Hours. all the generators and everything, ready to go for the lights. Might want to clean your lights too. Yeah, there's a couple of bugs on there. Ladies and gents, this is where it all starts. Night driving, you've got to have some clean lights. Any dirt on those lights will hinder the throw and the range of your lights. You'll be surprised. So give them a good clean before you start your night driving. This episode completely sponsored by In Darkness We Find Camp. Get yourself one of these, it will help you see in the dark. Before we get to any more tips, I thought I'd run you through my light setup and why I have it the way it is and how I find it because I've had two different types. And then we'll look at Torbs's lights afterwards which are vastly different and a lot more powerful. Let's get to this one first. Some may say I'm scared of the dark, but wait till you see Torbs' setup or my other setup as well. On top there, I've got six Life Force Strikers. Now, honestly, I can get away with just having four up there, but four is a good number to have up there. I've tested this in the past. You can go to that video later on and have a look if you want in finer detail. So that's up there for more like a spread, but I thought I would only use the ones behind the grill, which are another two down here. I thought I'd only use those for the highway, but I find I use these for the highway as well. Now, my worry was the reflection off the bonnet. But when you're casting a lot of light out, the reflection on the bonnet doesn't really bother you because as long as you're compensating out there, it's not a problem here. So we'll get to that with cheap lights a bit later on and the placement of them. I use all those six and those two on the front when I'm driving on the highways at night and especially in the bush. If I'm driving around the suburbs where there's not a lot of light on, I'll only use the two behind the grill. But to be honest, the lights on the modern Hilux 2021 version, the headlights are pretty damn good. From 600 meters all the way to where I'm sitting in, in the driver's seat, heaps of light. Enough light, but I like my Land Cruiser setup way better and Torbs' light setup way better. Let's go to Torbs', which is an absolute overkill and he will admit that too. Overkill. I don't know what Ronnie's talking about overkilling. Whoa. All right. Yeah, I'll admit it. Bit of overkill, but I love daylight. Let me run you through the lights that I've got. Here we are at the business end. Yes, you do need a powerhouse to run all my lights. Luckily, I've got a 79. So let's start with the front. I've got the HDX 2s. Absolutely love them had the ones before yes the HIDs did go a bit longer but the color match was awful the new ones not as far but the LED and the HIDs are within about 500 kelvs so that's mint also I'm running a 20 inch light bar just above the two HTX's and then the def bar up the top it's a 50 inch dual light bar that thing sucks some serious power but it also pump some serious light. You could, I don't know, they call them bunny burners for a reason. The cruisers are renowned for having the worst headlights. They're like candles in behind a plastic cover. So I've upgraded them to the new PBS Halo Demon Eyes. <laughs> so they pump out some serious light. So when I have to dip all the rest of the lights, these headlights still give me plenty of light to see where I'm going. Where do I use my lights? On the highways, mid, mid darkness going up to midnight i normally just run the front lights i don't worry about the death bar but when i'm on the road at two o'clock in the morning and there's no one else around i just pump everything because i don't have to worry about it and in the bush i crank the everything up as well but you can get away on the highway with just the front lights no dramas at all if i could pick just one combination here it would have to be the hdx2s because they are the most useful lights 
The rest of them is just for mass light, which isn't helpful when doing highway driving, where the HTX2s, they're an all-rounder. Driving at night in a convoy, this is a convoy one, you've got people behind you. Now you've got all your lights on, which is great. And when people put lights on behind you, it annoys the crap out of you, right? But really, you should be more considerate, I would say. All right, Dawes, ask me what people should be asking the person in front when driving at night. Hey, babe, can I turn on my lights? Of course you can. Right. Uh, sweet cheers, bud. So, the issue is, you're going to get it through your rear mirror if, unless you've got a car that's fully packed and you can't see anything anyway. So flick your mirror, so easy, you have a function on your mirror. The side mirrors, it doesn't really bother me because I've got so much light out in front of me. But if you're one of those guys that doesn't have a lot of light, fold your mirrors in, you know, by hand, automatic, whatever. The thing is, everyone's got lights in your convoy. It's a four-wheel drive convoy. People want to use the gear. People want to see what they're doing. And it's usually the vehicle in front that startles the animals. It's quite important that he allows you uh, to run your lights because when he's running all his lights up in front, it creates this dark void between the two of you if you can't run your lights. And I've seen it a lot where the first car will pass and an animal like a kangaroo or something will jump out after the first car. If you don't have your lights on, kapow, you're going to hit him because he's jumping into that dark void. So the car behind you needs to be able to see that. Otherwise, they're just blindly going into, into things. Also, potholes, all kinds of stuff on, on the track. Oh, ho, ho. hey, Torben. <laughs> there are some brutal washouts coming up. So there's like five in a row, okay? Don't take them at speed. Copy that. They need to be able to see it. Just allow the person behind you to have their lights on. That's all I've got to say. And that's in a transmission. When it comes to adjusting your lights so you, you get the exact throw that you want, when it comes to roof lights, it's not that easy. You've actually got to spend some time on the roof. On the front bar though, we'll discuss that in, in a sec. That's the easy one. When it comes to adjusting your roof lights, the less you have on the roof, the better it is because I've got six. There's a lot of adjustment here. And you generally only have to do this once unless you don't tighten them enough. So make sure you get it right the first time and you tighten them enough. Whatever you do up here, you're on a straight road where there's no one, like a dirt road, or on a dead end. But you need to have a bit of a vision up ahead so you can actually see what the light's actually hitting. It also helps to have a few trees it also helps to have a long road because then you can see exactly how far your lights are throwing and what you're getting. If you put too much light right out in front of you, it's going to ruin the, effect, the effectiveness of your vision in long range. So you want everything to sort of be mid to long range. That's normal headlights, that's high beams. Lights behind the grill, roof lights. That's kind of what you're gonna get. Now, the GoPro is probably not doing it justice because it's on auto light. It'll, um, you know, it'll adjust things to it. But there is a lot of light coming out in front of me here. So that is my light. You can see there's a couple of spots in it that seem a little bit darker than others. That's because the outside lights I've actually angled them out a bit, so I've got a bit more um, side vision. Because without side vision, you can just. Yeah, you're going to miss tracks, you're going to turn into logs, um, stakes, rocks, anything like that. So you want side vision. Especially for bush driving. Alright, quick tip on adjusting your long distance spotlights on the front of your car. Now as your weight changes in your vehicle, the height of those lights will change too. So normally there's a bolt on either side, you just loosen those up. Be on a nice flat long distance road where no one's going to come over the hill while you're trying to adjust it and just adjust it so you can see the point just touching in the distance and that's usually the perfect height for your long distance driving lights so it's quite simple just find a nice clear area where you can do a long distance check
dusty roads. You can put on as much light as you want, but if there's any dust around, it's actually a hindrance. The more light you push out when there's dust in front of you, the less visibility you will have. So don't sit in anyone's dust. And this is what Torben thinks about my dust. Don't sit in Ronnie's dust. Um, really doesn't help. And dust reflects light. Two circumstances I can think of right now where driving at night is actually safer than driving during the day. But the first one is on tight tracks. Because during the day, you're driving on a tight track, you can't tell if there's someone coming around the corner. I'm actually a little bit anxious when I'm on those type of tracks and it's a weekend because there are so many people out and about, you just don't know when someone's gonna come around the corner if it's a full drive or a motorbike even. But at night time, no worry at all. You will know when there's someone coming because the lights will show up even before they even get to the corner. So you'll see the lights on the corner, you'll notice someone there, they will see your lights and you'll be able to avoid a head-on collision. The other thing that's safer to drive at night, I'll give you an example. The Canning Stock Route, the Simpson Desert or any single lane track where there's a lot of dunes. During the day, you just don't know when someone's gonna come over that hill. At night, you'll be able to see their beams in the dust. You'll be able to see their lights well ahead because every time they go over a dune and up and down, they're doing the same thing, their lights are gonna move up and down. You will always see people from miles and miles away before you'd ever see them during the daytime. Idling your vehicle with all of your lights on. There are certain situations where you would do that. Maybe you're watching someone else do something or you're cutting firewood. Maybe you're winching someone. The problem is though, even if you have two batteries in the front, you are slowly draining your batteries, especially if you have a lot of light like I do or like Torbs does. If you've got one of those big light bars and two spotties on the front, that is enough to draw more power than your alternator can keep, keep up with. Something to keep in mind. So if you idle for longer periods of time, it's going to eventually drain your battery. So when you're driving on the highway, that's no problem because you're revving higher your vehicle is producing more power from the alternator because there's this high, higher revs. But just be a bit cautious when it comes to idling for a long period of time with your lights on. They will drain your battery. When upgrading headlights on your vehicle, especially to LEDs, they don't come pre-set to a certain height ready for you to rock and roll. You will have to adjust them and usually it's on the back of it. If you're ever wondering why people keep flashing you, well, it's probably because you're blinding them. So get that sorted straight away. Cheap shitty lights. Cheap lights, are they good? Or are they bad? One condition, they are good. You're in the bush, cheap, Crappy lights are better than having no additional lights. They're gonna add more spread, you're gonna get more view, you're gonna find camp easier at night. But when it comes to the highway, cheap, shitty lights, it's not a good idea. And here is why. As you're driving, the light that your cheap, crappy lights are casting may be short range. It may be really bright, but it may be short range because that's usually, it's usually in the optics, that's where the price is, that's where the value and the quality is. It's not how bright they are, it's how far they can shoot, how far they can project. Because if your light only projects 200 meters, it's actually robbing you of your vision up ahead. Because there's so much light in front of you, and there's a little bit of light further up, it's going to rob your eyes of that vision. It's a bit like, let's say, you're walking around in the dark, and someone turns to you, shines their, their head torch right in your face, and now you lost your night vision. That's pretty much what happens with cheap, crappy lights. You lose your night vision. That's what these cheap, crappy lights will do on the highway for your distance. When it comes to highway, you want decent lights. But in the bush, fine. Cheap, shitty lights, all good.
In darkness we find camp. Oh, don't we just? Again. <laughs> Direct hit. Direct hit. Uh, get yourself one of those patches. Hook line sinker. Well, it is my fault, I guess. I wanted to make this video. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> There's a proper reason this time. Yeah. I hope you guys found the tips and advice helpful. Uh, look, just for driving in general at night and also your light setups. You want to know more about light setups, you can check out Torbs's modified 179. 79 and the next one coming up soon, which might be out before this one. Oh, you never know. Also, the light setup on the Hilux there. So, look, got any questions, put them down below. If you've got any advice yourself you would like to add, put it down below. Other than just get to camp in the daylight, because we both know that ain't going to happen. Happening. That ain't happening. Nah, that's if, boring. If you're going to say that, just don't bother commenting. Let's get a fire going. Yes. I'm cold. Yeah, I have a few coldies. I should really just put on a jumper, eh? Yeah, it makes sense, yeah, wouldn't it? Yeah.